So this right here is the Loop Deck CT. It's made by the awesome people at Loop Deck who are also the sponsors of this video. So it's been around for a while now, but I just got mine about a couple months ago and I've been using it every time I have to do a new edit, just so that I can get used to it and see if it's something that I can implement into my workflow. So what is the Loop Deck CT? To simply put it, it's a customizable editing console. So it'll basically help me edit my videos a lot faster. And I think I got it at the perfect time too, since they just released this Final Cut Pro plugin called Command Post, which opens up more ways for you to use this controller and fully customize it to fit your workflow. So Command Post is a free open source application for the Mac that works great with programs like Final Cut Pro and also After Effects and Adobe Premiere. So I'll show you some of the new functions that I've also implemented onto the controller later in the video. So let me show you the controller first. So as you can see here, this thing is beautiful and it is really, really well made. You have six dials here, which also act as buttons when you push them down. You'll have eight fully customizable buttons here in the middle, along with six more buttons at the bottom left here and six on the right side. You'll have a scroll wheel in the middle that is also touch activated. And my favorite, the 12 additional touchscreen buttons at the top here. So majority of these are customizable, except for a couple buttons. And since I use Final Cut Pro 10 99% of the time when I edit a video, I'm gonna show you how I customize the Loopback CT with Final Cut Pro 10. And hopefully by watching my video, you can see whether something like this could help with your workflow. So the first thing we need to do is install the Loopback software. This is what it should look like after it is installed. Next thing you need to do is install Command Post, which you'll find under Marketplace and then Plugins. And one more thing before you get going, go back to Marketplace, click on Profiles, and download Final Cut Pro with Command Post. So now you're ready to go. Under Workspace, you'll see that it comes set up with three different workspaces. One is for general editing, another for color, and audio. So I'll show you guys how I set mine up for general editing. At first, I was a bit overwhelmed as to what to change the dials and buttons to. So what I did was I went through a few old edits, and I just went through some of the functions and features that I use the most within Final Cut Pro 10. And then I implemented all of those within the controller. And I had to change a few things along the way. And to be honest, I'm still changing things as I go along. So don't get too overwhelmed. Play around with it a little bit and try out different buttons and dials for each functions and see which will work best with your workflow. The main thing is setting it up so that you can edit your videos faster. All right, so let's start with the dials here. So this year I've been editing a lot more vertical videos for TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube. So I use the scale all feature a lot so I can readjust the size of each video. So I set the one dial here for scale all and the other two below it to position X and Y so that I can move around its position. On the other side, I have it set to timeline zoom since I'm always changing the timeline view. So by having it here, it will easily change it for me. Then I have one set to clip volume and another one to overall project volume. So I do a lot of speed ramping and speed changes throughout my videos. So the next six buttons that you see here, I have set to retiming options. One for normal speed, automatic speed, and then fast for the next four buttons. With button seven, I'm still kind of playing around with it. But what I did here just to show you guys what it can do, I added a transition with button number seven. So with a click of a button, it will add a transition between your clips. So instead of you going through your transitions tab and look for that exact transition, you can now set it up so that a certain button uses a transition that you like and use often. I didn't really mess around with other buttons here at the bottom. Most of them are customizable, but this here I have it to switch to different profiles and workspaces that I have set up. And this button here will automatically start the export process. So the scroll wheel is really, really awesome. Again, you can customize it in different ways. Right now I have it set to skip frames when I turn the wheel by one frame or by 10 frames if I have the bottom part selected on the scroll wheel. You can add a new page and change it up however you want. You can even use it as a mouse if you wanted to. I personally wouldn't, but there are other options that you can change it to. And now the touch buttons at the top. So basically the same thing. You can fully customize these. I actually really, really like this part of the console since I'll have the name attached to it, making it easier for you to remember what each button is. Some of the ones I have it set to are copy and paste effects. So if I did changes to one clip and I want to apply that to another, all I have to do is copy it with that one button and then paste it with the next one. I have the show horizon button I set as well. So if I want to bring up a grid to see if everything is aligned, then all I have to do is press that button. And this button I set as the add marker button. If I need to place a marker on the timeline, I can easily do that now. And it's super easy to change all of these as well. I can just quickly search for the function that I'm looking for and then drag it over to the button that I want to assign it to. 
And same thing goes for all the other buttons and dials. Since each dial has two functions, which is the turn and the push, it'll have two different slots for it. So now I'm gonna switch workspaces to color and let's see what we can do in there. I haven't adjusted or customized this part yet. I've actually been using the preset buttons that it came with. And to be honest, I actually love how it's already set up. So if I click on the color board here, the dials and buttons are pretty much set up with all the attributes I usually use when color correcting and grading. So if I click on shadows, now I can just move the wheel and you can see it adjusting the shadows attribute. Same with midtones and highlights as well. So a lot of these weren't possible before the command post update, like scale all and rotation and things like automatically adding in a transition. These are just a few things that they added in with the new plugin. And actually there's a bunch of other things that you can do like add in a mini timeline, a quick way to search your console and movable markers where you can move the markers anywhere you want easily now with the new update. This is really, really cool how you can fully customize this thing to how you edit. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know what you guys think of the Loop Deck CT. Do you think this is something that can benefit you and speed up your editing process? Let me know down below. I want to know what you guys think.